guys, it's Emma here from Cruising Isn't Just For Old People and I'm here today in a video with some of my favourite people, the best cruising brains that I can find on the internet. We've got bloggers, we've got YouTubers, we've got Brits, Americans, Australians, we've got absolutely everybody here, all here to give you tips on how to save money when you cruise, so keep watching. So what do we take when we go on the cruise? Fire engine? Hey Emma and the cruising isn't just for old people community. I'm Sherry with Cruise Tips TV and I'm so happy to be here today sharing some money saving tips with all of you. Oh hi, this is Ben and David from Honest Cruising. Hello everyone, Brandon here from Cruising is Life. Hiya, my name's Sana. I'm a cruise blogger from Glasgow, Scotland and my blog is vegancruiser.co.uk. Hi, my name's Flavia and I'm from Ships and Champagne and this is Joshua Gray. Joshua Gray. Hi there, we're Paul and Carol loves to travel. Hey guys, it's Emily from It's A Cruise Life on Instagram. Hey everybody, Tommy here from the Always Be Booked Cruise Podcast. Hi, people from Ocean Time. Hi everyone, my name's Dania, but I'm better known to my readers as Cruise Miss. Hi, this is Marcus from Sparks. I'm Gary Bembridge of tipsfortravellers.com. Hi there, Richard Cross here from Holiday and Cruise TV on uh, Sky Channel 256. Hi, I'm Luke. And I'm Gavin, and we're from holidaysatsea.co.uk. And hello, I am Emma and I'm from Cruising Isn't Just For Old People co uk. Who should I use to book a cruise? Our number one tip for saving money is to search before booking your cruise. Always book with a travel agent. It works out the same price as booking direct, if not cheaper, and you also get all that expert advice in helping you find your perfect cruise. Always speak to a cruise travel agent. So by all means, uh, price your holiday with a cruise line, check what their website says, but then get on a phone with your friendly travel agent and see what they can do for you. Don't assume booking direct is always cheaper as sometimes you can get much better deals by going online or to your local travel agent. If you're booking with Royal Caribbean, it's worth definitely checking with a travel agent but sometimes it may be worth going direct. I know there's always an exception to the rule, that's a Tesco club card. £10 of your club card vouchers will give you £30 Royal Caribbean money. Only thing is, you have to book directly with Royal Caribbean. You cannot go through a travel agent. Look at cashback sites. They sometimes offer you three to five percent off your cruise in the form of cashback. When should I book a cruise? We recommend leaving it till the last moment before you book your cruise. There's a chance, obviously, you could miss out on the cruise if it's fully booked or the cabin's gone that you want. But we've done this in the past, and it's always worked for us. In fact, last year we saved 300 pen a person uh, just doing this with Thompson when we cruised the Adriatic. So it is a gamble, but it definitely does work. What does last minute mean? Wait until at least 90 days, or even better, 60 days, before you want to cruise, before you start looking for the right cabin, the right ship, the right itinerary. The reason is that people who've pre-booked their cruise have to pay their final deposit, their final balance, 90 days before the cruise. So this means the cruise ships then know how many cabins are free. So they will start discounting, discounting and discounting to make sure that every single cabin is full. If you don't want to book last minute, another great option can be to book really far in advance. I know people who book two or three years in advance, which can save you a lot of money, but you do have to commit. But who doesn't want to commit to a cruise? So that can be a fantastic option. Where should I cruise to? Try to be as flexible as you can when you're booking your cruise. If you don't mind where you go or when you go, you can end up getting a real bargain. Cruising is such good value for money anyway, but if you don't mind where you're cruising to, you can make it even cheaper. And at the same time, you might end up discovering some amazing destinations that you've never thought of visiting before. What type of cabin should I book? One of my top money saving tips would be to book a guaranteed cabin. Guaranteed cabins are normally cheaper than one where you pick your cabin and it basically means that your cabin will be assigned to you last. It might be a few weeks before you cruise or a few months. You could get the leftover cabin so that is bad but you could get an upgrade so for me that's fine. Saving money is my main priority. Never rule out an inside cabin. They're the cheapest and in my opinion they're the best definitely my favourite. It just means that with the money you save on the cabin, you can put towards other things on your cruise and have an even better holiday. Tip would be to go on a cruise with a group of friends. 
So for instance, you can share a cabin with two or three other of your friends and it can work out more economical than, say, sharing a cabin for two. The cruise is booked. What should I do now? Research those extra costs, hidden costs, whatever you want to call them. From gratuities to sodas to alcohol to the casino, the spa. There's so many things that can add up. So you've really got to do your research in advance to find out what those extra costs are. And if you're on a budget, you might want to avoid them or keep them to a minimum. Drinks, drinks, drinks biggest tip well one of our biggest tips would be to look at the drinks packages on board to see if they're going to be good value for you what we do is recommend that you add up the average amount of drinks you're going to spend on a cruise and if you're big drinkers it might work out cheaper to book the drinks package on board drinks packages are available on the majority of the uh, british the american and the european cruise lines plus they're also uh, available as well and included on some of the luxury and all-inclusive lines as well uh, so do make sure you keep your eye out but sometimes you might do well by paying for what you do drink versus drinking to get your money's worth so and you'll probably feel better um at the end um, some of them can be very expensive and they, they don't always work out for the best for some people. However, there are cruise lines like Fred Olsen that will offer an all-inclusive drinks package for 10 to, between 10 and £15 per person per day. It, 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 is, it isn't for everybody, you know, if you don't drink a lot of alcohol it might not be worth it, but when it comes to companies like Fred Olsen it really, really does pay to go with the drinks package. It's also worth remembering that a drinks package does not mean the full-on alcohol extreme ultimate beverage package. You can just get a soda package, which I do quite a lot, because I like to have a couple of Cokes by the pool, and it normally works out cheaper. So my last Royal Caribbean cruise, if I had three drinks a day, then I'd make my money back. So it is worth looking into that. A great tip when travelling with kids is to get the juice package. Kids get unlimited fizzy drinks, so it's, but you can have like Diet Coke, Diet Lemonade, soda water and it's unlimited all day. If you're quite precious about them drinking fizzy drinks, then you can also upgrade to one that includes fresh juice. And for me, it just saves all that stress that they can have a drink when they want. And you're not worrying about, is this costing me a fortune? They're keeping hydrated. So it's a real winner. Uh, my favorite tip for saving money on a cruise is to take advantage of the cruise line's policies that allow you to bring on two bottles of wine uh, for each stateroom. That's different on every cruise line. I have a bottle of rosé I bought here for my next cruise. I uh, bought that at the uh, grocery store for about $12 US. Uh, sometimes on a cruise, one glass of wine will cost you $12, so I feel like I saved a little money there. You know, a lot of people think, uh, you got to either pay for every drink or i got to get the drink package, one or the other. There is another option, uh, also besides sneaking booze on the ship, which we don't condone. It's not that. It's called on Carnival, it's called the Bon Voyage Package. Other cruise lines have it as well. All you have to do is call or check the website. Very, very often you can pre-purchase bottles of liquor. Now, it's not like the liquor, co the liquor store prices, but it's still very, very high value uh, when you compare it to having to pay for drinks one by one. It's not as good a value as the drink package, but a lot of people don't need the drink package. They don't drink as much as uh, <clears throat> some people uh, who may or may not be appearing on this uh, episode right now. How do we keep count of all of these costs? Always check your onboard account. You can check it every day or every couple of days just to see how much you are spending and just to make sure that you don't overspend on things that you might not necessarily need. Is there anything I should bring? So when we go cruising, we take some things with us. What do we take, Joshua? Crispies and squash. That's right. So we take crisps because if you buy them on the ship on board, they can cost quite a bit of money. And we take some squash for Joshua so that he doesn't have to just drink water all the time and we don't have to spend money buying him soft drinks. If you are someone who likes to drink a lot of squash, it is worth getting one of these really highly concentrated bottles because that makes 28 drinks and how easy is that to carry on? Easy peasy. Are there any other things I can cut out to save money? Skip the internet package. Uh, use your cruise as a way to get away from it all. Um, there may be places in port where you can get some free Wi-Fi, think cafes, uh, but if, especially if you're from the United States and you have an opportunity to go into a news blackout, take it. Eat in the main dining room or the buffet for as many meals as you can on your cruise. Specialty dining will cost you a little bit extra when you cruise. 
probably like $25 or more per person, but still that's money in your pocket when you eat in the dining room. And it's also a good way to get to know your dining room staff, especially if you're a traditional diner, you have the same waiter and assistant waiter every night, and they get to know your likes and dislikes and can give you really great service. You stay off of your cell phones while out at sea, making a simple phone call or a text message can get pretty expensive while you're out on these ships. And if you decided to pick the uh, Wi-Fi package while you're on board, they can be pretty pricey, and honestly, for what you're paying for, half the time they're not really even that good. I don't want to cut out everything. Some people see having a spa treatment as a luxury and extravagance whilst on a cruise, but it really needn't be. If you're willing to be flexible on time, so for instance going on a port day or an embarkation day, you can save significant amounts of money, so why not go and pamper yourself? What should I do when I get to port? One of our biggest tips, and you can save bucket loads of cash doing this, is not to book excursions aboard the ship. Book them by third party or by local people of where you're going. You can get them so, so much cheaper and even save more money by just exploring the area by yourself and taking public transportation. You can find an awful lot out on things like TripAdvisor, Cruise Critic, the obvious places, and just looking at people's posts on the page you can find some little tips just write them down if you're planning a cruise and then come back to them when you're sort of planning out what you're going to do and yeah you can save an awful lot of money the thing that i love to do is in every port you possibly can look for a hop on hop off bus they are very inexpensive they'll take you to all the main sites and you will save a huge amount of money when it comes to excursions of course if there's an excursion on board that you really want to do then of course splash out. But excursions can be a major cost. So you want to find out how you can save money on that big cost. Hop on, hop off buses are a great alternative. How do I start saving for a cruise? One of my favorite money saving tips for going on vacation holidays is simply a money box. So I put all my spare change, any change I get, I put in here. You don't even notice that you're saving because it's just money that you don't really miss so i put that on very cool and my last one that i opened i had over 1300 dollars. so i just think it's very simple easy to save put your spare change your five dollar notes you won't even know it's missing and it's extra bonus money is there anything that i could buy that could save me money always have travel insurance. There are cruise specific policies available. These can often include things like emergency formal wear hire, they can include missed ports, airline issues, cancelled show excursions. So it really does pay to have a good policy and it definitely pays to have a cruise specific policy. Um, if you need to see the onboard doctor for whatever reason, it can run incredibly expensive. Uh, before you even have any tests, before you have any medications prescribed, it can cost anywhere between 50 50 and 100 pound just for the consultation and um, shop around there's loads of different options out there but you will find something that's ideal for you but perhaps more importantly is to research what is included or free included in your cruise fare there's so many different things that you can do you can be pampered in the main dining room you can take in a seminar catch a show take a sunset stroll enjoy the pools the hot tubs the slides there's so many things to do that are complimentary one of my favorite things to do is to grab an ice cream in the afternoon, maybe even high tea, it's wonderful. Don't tell anyone I told you this, but if you're traveling, uh, say you're flying on a plane and you have your, your bag of all your little bottles with you, your shampoo, your lotion, if you sneak one of these bourbon bottles in there and you take it on the cruise ship with you, probably nobody's gonna notice. Shh, don't tell anyone I told you. Happy holidays. Thank you so much. And until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Bye. 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 Thanks for being on board and see you later. Thank you all for being part of this community. I've had so much fun. That's, that was in past tense. I mean, I'm having so much fun and we're going to keep having fun here. I'm going to put all the links to your blogs or YouTubes or whatever you do in the description. Please follow each other and tweet each other and Instagram each other and check out each other's websites and subscribe to their YouTubes and subscribe to mine. I've had so much fun editing this down. It's taken a lot of work, but I hope that you like it in the end. So please leave me a comment if you do, or if you don't, leave me a comment anyway. I'd like to know. Money, money, money. Dun, dun, dun. It's so important dun, dun, dun. in these economical times. Money, money, money. 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 <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha